this analysis was kind of pivotal to the decision as to why to keep the Tesla shares. It is February, se oh, sorry, it's February 11th. And of course, this is the video log that takes 30,000 to a million. It's a Monday. And after I take you through the accounts, what I'm going to talk about is the three stages of a company that a public traded, publicly traded company that I think um, normally normally companies go through in three stages, and how maybe perhaps that will help you identify where a company's at that you're trying to invest in and help you pick some stocks that are have the potential to grow or at least recognize what stage they're in and see what you can expect. Maybe it'll help you out. I don't know. But uh, I'm going to go into the browser now and show you where the account's at. It's a little bit over 79,000. Um, over here, right after the chemical earnings, it had a really nice pop. Almost got to the $80,000 level. I think once I reach 80000 uh, I'll probably put a little bit more money into the account as a reward. I haven't really put money into it in a long time. So these kinds of gains here in the last three months or so are pretty natural. Um, these four thousand dollars that I've gained, they have not been. I haven't added any money into it. So um, if you're just curious, this is the all-time chart here. It looks like this. I started taking this account seriously about August twenty-eighth in two thousand eighteen. So since then, I've I've gained a little bit more more than forty-three um, percent. So that's that. If you're interested into the whole in the holdings. These are the holdings. You can pause the video at any time and just figure this out. Um, these are options contracts. It tells you the price of the contract, the date that it expires, and the number of contracts that I've sold or, or bought. Um, I have some China uh, ETF puts that I've sold recently. So I have all these, Cameco, EXK. Um, I have, um, you know, energy transfer here some more chemical and the silver calls that six silver calls that are bought here and these are all the stock positions it says the number of stocks right here and the symbol and how much they've lost or gained today so you can deduct if you're really interested you can take that number multiply it by the uh, current share price and you can get the amount of money that I have invested into that particular stock the biggest gains today came mostly from chemical because I have 1600 shares of Cameco and even if going up just a couple and a half percent um, it's huge gains of course I have some options sold uh, through Cameco so I have an $18 loss on that but a $368 gain on the actual position so that's great um, now now that you know the positions um, also there's been a lot of talk there's been a lot of talk about Tesla lately and I've even made two videos about Tesla and this one's also going to be kind of related to Tesla <laughs> now I'm surely talking about it a lot considering I don't own any position in Tesla but uh, my mom does <laughs> I hold some stocks from my mom uh, she has nine shares which is pretty cool and um, we're wondering whether we should sell them or not but uh, ultimately decided to keep them for the long haul and this analysis was kind of pivotal to the decision as to why to keep the Tesla shares, uh, even though it might be an intermediate bubble. All right, so let me, I want to show you what I'm talking about here. So we're moving into the discussion now. This is what I'm talking about. All right. This are the, these are the three stages that a company could go through it doesn't mean that every company goes through these stages it's just a typical observation that um, I've made about stocks in general and how they tend to grow and uh, evolve through their life so at first we have an uncertain stage where people you can even sense it in the media where people aren't sure if this is going to be a real company it sounds disruptive, but what about the competition? It's not going to work out. Their finances are not in order. And all the negative that could happen is right here in the uncertainty stage where the price 
just stays kind of flat and low. A lot of companies don't make it past this uncertainty stage. Okay, like for example, Blue Apron, right? <laughs> All these IPOs, they just don't make it past the uncertainty stage and they just keep falling down until the stock eventually is delisted or privatized or whatever. So this isn't like a certain thing. Not every company is bound to go through the cycle. Okay, not all. In fact, I would I would say that a minority, a major minority, make it through. Just the names that you know as the big companies today. All right. So the uncertainty stage. Oh, that is not what was supposed to happen. Okay, the uncertainty stage right here. Now uh, let's look at some real examples. Okay, so. I picked this chart. I can't do in Robinhood because Robinhood doesn't show the all-time charts, and it's really difficult. So this is just a regular company, Target. Um, it's a retailer, so you can see the uncertainty stage here, where people weren't sure if this is going to be a big retailer or not in the 90s. Um, company was just doing fine, but it really had its exponential growth here from 96 all the way to 2000, January 2000. Um, yeah something like that almost 2001 so it, the company went from basically from four dollars you know to um, or from like five six I don't know what what are we at right here six dollars all the way to like 44 so you know six seven hundred percent um, growth exponential and then after that it reached its saturation stage where it's been going up and down and up and down and now it looks like it's hitting another peak uh, recently so um, during the exponential during the uncertainty stage right you have the, the finance problems or whatever or or uh, people just aren't sure it's gonna be a dominant company or they think it's it's already topped out and that's all the growth potential the company has and then all of a sudden you know the company starts picking it, it, it reaches a certain point where uh, it's outbeating competition it's it's innovating something new and it's reaching a new audience and it's basically picking the low hanging fruit of the consumers out there so um, anybody who wants the product and can afford it is is now basically having it and then the third stage of course is the the saturation stage where everybody who who can afford the product now has it basically and growth from here is is highly dependent on uh, whether or not the company continues to innovate whether or not the company continues to um, um, uh, create more you know d d grab more market share or from from other competitors but basically the low hanging fruit is, is done and now they're just really scrapping and they're trying to do everything they can to keep the company growing and profitable. Um, now, you can, you can still grow, you can still become a bigger company during the saturation phase. Uh, a lot of it is going to be dependent on the market you're in. You're now more connected to your industry. So like for example, if you're an oil company, you start getting very, very dependent on the price of oil, right? If you're a small oil company, you're just kind of more dependent on your discoveries, on uh, growing your, your user base or whatever, your, your customer base, your management, putting that in place and getting all the pipelines done and everything else. Um, so that the, how all happens in the exponential phase. But in saturation now, you've reached a big market. Now your company um, price is highly dependent on your commodity etc or like for example uh, with let's say with Target Target already has stores all across America anybody who likes it who wants to shop at Target is already basically shopping at Target right and any kind of growth from here is gonna have to you know strike a new nerve somewhere maybe they, they go international uh, maybe they open up a new type of store maybe they did something super innovative at Target to uh, have another leg up um, but for the most part their exponential phase is, is done now they're just during in saturation phase so they have to really watch their you know their margins they have to operate more smoothly and stuff like that to remain profitable and still grow at a moderate pace 
but no more easy hanging fruit. Um, what's another company? How about a company like um, Netflix? Let's take a look here. So Netflix. All right, here's Netflix. You can see how in, um, I mean, you could argue this is the, ex the uh, exponential phase here, right? It goes from like $6 to 37 fairly quickly and 2011 peaks out. But I think that's, that's basically the uncertainty stage, right? So it resolves itself somewhere over here in 2013 where it's clear that Netflix is going to be a thing, right? So it goes through its, let's see if you can see it clearly on the stream. Let's go like this. Okay, so, I mean, on the recording, not stream. <laughs> so somewhere around here on 2013, it's clear that Netflix is here to stay. And so it begins its exponential phase to pick up all the users. And you can see how basically it's reached saturation here. Like anybody in the world who can afford Netflix already has Netflix. So now it's just about getting, you know, more consumers on the margin or just trying to rely on population growth or and, and people entering the middle class more and more. And uh, it's a battle from here on out just to keep growing, right? You have a lot more competition now. Yeah, you, you know, you're you're basically, you know, struggling against um, other streaming networks, etc. And so you have to be cleaner. You have to come up with new products. You have to keep innovating just to stay where you're at, which is what they're doing right now. So that's a really clear example of what I'm talking about right here. So personally, like if you're looking for this exponential growth phase, I think that's done with. Okay, Netflix is done exponentially growing. Uh, now you can still invest. You, you can still find value there, but you know maybe they... they they find uh, a good smooth way to operate the company and now they start doing dividends or something like that it might be a fine play but at this point this exponential growth in my opinion is done so um but if we look at a company like apple whoa it wants me to pick apple okay since i talk about apple a lot um in this okay maybe i shouldn't do this all right all right so I talk about Apple a lot, and this is as far as it goes. Only 2015. All right, there we go. So, perfect. I think um, the exponential phase of Apple actually started happening a lot earlier. So this is the uncertainty stage where Apple's kind of battling whether or not it's going to be a thing. You have, you know, funding scares. You've got, um, you know, um, are are they going to get outcompeted by other computer companies, etc. And all of a sudden, you know, iPhone iPhone comes along. What is going on at this site? Anyway, uh, iPhone comes along. And then in the 2000s, it just starts this exponential phase. There's a mini bubble again. And then um, you have a continuation all the way up. And I personally don't think that Apple has reached its saturation phase yet. I think it's still growing. I think it's still in the exponential phase from what the chart shows me over here. And um, I don't think that Apple has reached all of its potential customers. It has a lot of international customers that still want Apple, and um, it's reaching kind of saturation phase because in order to afford an Apple phone, you still need to have the money, right? There are a lot of people that want the phone, they still don't. But at the same time, like, they've got a lot of cheap phones out there now, or relatively cheap, and they uh, and, and people keep making, making more and more money around the world and in the US, so, People can, their Apple phones are pretty affordable now. People make payments. Everybody who wants an Apple phone almost has one. So Apple is almost at that stage. However, excuse me one sec. I'm going to sneeze, maybe. <laughs> maybe not. Anyway. Um, oh, okay. 
I hate when I'm about to sneeze and don't sneeze. But um, they're already starting. I, I talked about this before, but they're starting to monetize their users and everything else. So I think they're doing a lot of good things. But I think they're still growing. They're not fully saturated yet as a company where um, I think a different phone company like maybe Samsung probably is. In fact, let me take a look at Samsung and see how they're doing and if it makes sense what I'm saying. All right, let's see. Is this Samsung? What the heck's going on here? I don't think this is it. Samsung Electronics. Is this it? Anyway, I can't find it. But maybe it's not up and out. Okay. I don't know. I don't know about Samsung. But um, I think Apple still got some room to go as well. But let's, uh, let's finally take a look at Tesla, right? Because I wanted to look at that. So here it is. This is this could be a little mini bubble here, but it keeps growing. I talk about how I think it's a uh, this exponential rise is within a, a a bigger exponential rise here, and that could just be the beginning. There could be a correction. There, there could be just the beginning of another exponential rise. All right. So you can see that this is the uncertainty stage right here. Let's see the Tesla. Okay, so it opens up, there's initial pop, and there's a long uncertainty stage, right? Uh, bankruptcy, funding problems, stock problems, you know, Elon Musk on Joe Rogan smoking weed and, um, you know, buying the company out at 420, uh, Arabian funds, whatever, and then Twitter wars, and then you have this probably beginning this could be the beginning of the exponential rise for Tesla. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I don't have any money in Tesla. Oh my gosh, I haven't showed you the chart. Okay, so let's go through it again. Sorry about that. So you have the opening here, the initial pop here. We have the uncertainty stage that I just talked about. And this could be the, the beginning of the exponential rise of the company. But uh, I don't, obviously, I don't know for sure. I'm not a Tesla investor. I don't know the company well enough. And um i wouldn't buy at this point personally but it could be the beginning even though it's coming off of a exponential rise right now and let me show you the exponential rise with this within the exponential rise <laughs> so if you zoom in here let's go to the day chart this could be the exponential rise within a bigger exponential rise Okay, you see this little pop, but it's it's part of a bigger pattern. All right, so let's go to three day, maybe seven day. It's, it could be part of a bigger pattern here, you see? So there's a bigger exponential curve that's kind of uh, overriding this little tiny one. So, I mean, I don't know, but definitely this is part of the uh, reason why I decided not to sell those stocks because this could be uh, for my mom I mean, anyway, not for myself. I don't have any. But um, it could be the beginning of the exponential. There we go. It hasn't really saturated the world. Not everyone and their mother owns Tesla yet if the product is really that overarching and popular. So uh, there's still a lot of people that could, that want Tesla, that don't have Tesla is what I'm trying to say. All right, I've dragged this video on for like 20 minutes and I've said one simple thing. <laughs> I've just kept reiterating it and stumbling over my words. It's pretty embarrassing. So I'm just going to stop the video right here. Okay, hopefully this helps you in some way. Okay, <laughs> to evaluate companies, even though I did a pretty sloppy job at explaining it. All right, but with that said, hopefully I updated <laughs> you guys on my account and what's going on. And some of the things I've been thinking about lately. So uh, I think I'm going to leave you all right here. Peace out.